What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're checking out another Warlock build in Season of the Wish. An underrated arc build that's just absolutely amazing right now. With the synergy that's created between the Vesper of Radius and this Arc 3.0 Stormcaller, you'll turn everything in Destiny into Easy Mode. Now, to be honest, I was hesitant at first about using this build this season. That's mostly because of the seasonal artifact boosting solar builds, putting those builds in the spotlight. But that hasn't stopped the Vesper of Radius one bit. This exotic continues to provide extraordinary benefits, allowing you to transform that glass cannon storm collar into an indestructible tank. The Vesper of Radius provides a unique intrinsic trait called Planetary Torrent, which is going to weaponize our rift. This provides enhanced class ability regeneration whenever you are surrounded by at least three enemies. With three enemies nearby, you'll have a bonus of 250%, but with six or more enemies nearby, that gets bumped up to a 1500% bonus. The base cooldown time of a rift is just over a minute, but with Vesper of Radius, you could have another rift available in less than 15 seconds. When you cast a rift, that rift will start sending out shockwaves that inflict arc damage to any enemy who's within seven and a half meters giving you the equivalent of a pulse grenade that's continuously detonating inside your rift. Shockwaves will be emitted every 5 seconds, with the first wave causing 300 points of base damage, and the rest causing 200 points of damage. Enemies who are defeated by these shockwaves will explode, causing an additional 100 points of damage. And when using the Vesper on an ARC subclass, those explosions will blind nearby enemies, Enemies who are blinded are temporarily removed from combat, unable to fire their weapons while disoriented, and since those blinded enemies will probably still be within range of a rift, they'll continue to take damage from any shockwaves. This will become an invaluable asset as you can instantly shut down aggressive enemies who are trying to push up on you. And on the flip side, you could use these weaponized rifts to be the aggressor, to push up into a crowd of enemies and then pop that rift to watch them all get decimated. The Vesper of Radius doesn't just weaponize a rift, it flips the entire paradigm of being a warlock, because rifts are typically just looked at as a safe space to regain health and to get away from all the chaos. But with the Vesper of Radius, these rifts will turn into your own personal fortress of solitude, and as long as there's enemies nearby, you'll never be without your fortress which will make this build a perfect option in Law Sectors, Nightfalls, and Dungeons especially. Now the Vesper of Radius can be used on any subclass, but to tap into the full potential of this exotic, you'll need to be running Stormcaller. And even though this build revolves around the use of the Vesper, it is just one part of an extremely powerful Stormcaller setup, because between our choices in our class tree, our weapon loadouts, and a few select artifact mods, this build is unstoppable. Before addressing our choice in weapons and artifact, let's talk about this Stormcaller class tree. We're using Electrostatic Mind, so whenever we defeat enemies with Arc abilities, or whenever we defeat blinded and jolted enemies, Ionic Traces will be created. Ionic Traces will cause us to become amplified, and each Ionic Trace is going to provide 12.5% melee and grenade energy, along with 15% extra class ability energy. We've already got a ton of class ability energy already coming back to us because of the Vesper, but this will significantly improve the uptime of all of our abilities. When we're amplified, we'll get 50 points of extra mobility, increased slide distance, and 40 points of bonus handling that gets applied to any equipped weapon. And whenever speed boosters kick in, we'll also gain a 15% damage resistance bonus that will stay in effect as long as we're sprinting. We're also using the Arc Soul aspect, so whenever we cast a rift, we'll have our Arc Buddy at our side, giving us a completely automated turret to add to the shockwaves that our rift will already be emitting. Any ally who passes through the rift will get their own Arc Buddy, and when allies are nearby, will have even more bonus class ability energy. With one ally nearby, we'll get a 40% increase that's going to stack right on top of the energy that Ionic Traces and the Vesper 
are going to provide. With two allies nearby, this bonus gets bumped up to 80%, with three allies causing it to be 120%, which should result in you having a never-ending supply of rift energy and health recovery for you and teammates. When we are amplified, which is going to be 99% of the time, our arc buddies will have a faster rate of fire, helping us melt those aggressive enemies even faster. When it comes to our fragments, there's a lot of good ones, but we only get four, and based on what weapons we're using, some of those might change. With that said, we start with Spark of Resistance. This is when you're expecting to be in a lot of engagements where your enemy is within 15 meters. When at least three enemies are within that range, you'll have 25% bonus damage resistance. And you'll continue to maintain that as long as there are at least three enemies within 15 meters. We're also using Spark of Amplitude. With the changes Bungie recently made to orb generation, this will really come in handy, allowing us to make a ton of extra orbs whenever we rapidly defeat enemies while we're amplified. We'll discuss artifact mods in more detail later, but we are using the Wished Into Being artifact mod, which means that when our super energy is almost full, our abilities will generate bonus orbs. This triggers at around the 75% mark and will create three extra orbs in the process, which is all gonna result in us having our super faster. We've also got Spark of Shock. This gives any grenade we're using the ability to jolt targets, Jolted targets continuously chain lightning damage through themselves and nearby enemies. This will greatly amplify our crowd control capabilities, and this also gives our grenades the ability to stun overload champions, which will be a tremendous asset in Nightfalls and other endgame content. And when we're using special arc weapons like the Indebted Kindness, which we'll talk more about later, Spark of Beacons will cause final blows to create blinding explosions. I failed to mention this earlier, but unstoppable champions will be stunned when they are blinded, and with the addition of Spark of Beacons, we'll have two options to stun unstoppable champions, and effectively keep all of our enemies disoriented. But let's say you're not using an arc special weapon. Maybe you're using the Trinity Ghoul or the Centrifuge. In this case, I would recommend using Spark of Brilliance. This way, when you defeat blinded enemies with precision damage, another blinding explosion will be created. Both of these fragments will be great options. It's just going to depend on what activity you're in and what choices you've made with your weapons. And before we discuss our weapon loadout in further detail, I want to address our grenade choice. Pulse grenades are typically what most players are using. They're a great option to have continuous damage over time but flashbang grenades cause enemies to become blinded. And with Spark of Shock, that one flashbang grenade will be able to stun both unstoppable and overload champions. And it helps us keep our enemies disoriented and jolted as we pump them full of electricity until they explode while we sit safely inside our Fortress of Solitude. So what weapons will really pair up with a Vesper of Radius? Well, honestly, there's dozens most any legendary arc weapon that has the ability to jolt is going to be a perfect fit, but the one that has stood out more than any other has been the Indebted Kindness. This special ammo sidearm shoots out tiny rockets, and it can drop with Volt Shot. So with the combination of the Anti-Barrier Seasonal Mod, the Volt Shot Weapon Trait, and Spark of Beacons, this one legendary weapon will be able to handle all three champion types. Another standout legendary option that has emerged this season will be the Crux Termination, a really versatile rocket launcher that can drop with Surrounded, and while it might not be the most popular weapon trait, it can even drop with Slide Shot. Most of the exotic arc weapons have some sort of synergy with just about every arc subclass, but even still, there's some that are going to be much more effective than others. Starting with the Trinity Ghoul, such an incredible exotic weapon that's going to pair up nicely with the Vesper of Radius, since its lightning rods will be triggered by any of our arc abilities, including our weaponized rift. Trinity Ghoul is more suited for mid to close range engagements, but it still has a good bit of range on it, 
so it's going to be a great option in Grandmasters, especially with the use of Spark of Beacons. And then there's the Risk Runner SMG, which is going to give you an incredible bonus in damage resistance which will come in handy when you're surrounded by a lot of enemies that are dealing arc damage, which is the case in several dungeons, like Ghost of the Deep. The Centrifuge might be just as underrated as the Vesper of Radius. This is a 450 RPM arc auto rifle that builds up a charge as you sprint, slide, or fire the weapon. This increases the weapon's range and its reload speed. When the centrifuge's overcharge meter is mostly full, final blows will create dragonfly-like explosions. And when that meter is completely full, it'll cause blinding explosions. And with the Overload Artifact mod equipped, the centrifuge will have the ability of stunning Overload and Unstoppable Champions. And when we want a more DPS-oriented exotic, we've got a few solid choices there as well. The Cloud Strike is the first that I want to talk about. It's more than just a great crucible weapon. It deals out lightning damage on final blows and on rapid hits. And with its catalyst unlocked, it has triple tap. A terrific choice in a lot of DPS situations. But then there's also the Thunderlord, equipped to handle overload champions. It's not quite the standout that it once was, but it's still a remarkable choice. But if it's optimal damage that you seek, the Grand Overture is definitely going to get you there. With its massive slug rounds and homing missiles, this weapon rips champions and bosses to pieces. And if you do decide to take your Fortress of Solitude on the offense, the Fourth Horseman or Legend of Acrius are going to be amazing choices to put up huge damage numbers at point blank range. Let's switch gears and talk about this season's artifact, which include a lot of situational mods that are all going to be based on what activity that you're jumping into. To start with, we have From Whence You Came and Solo Operative. From Whence You Came will need to be activated when you're going up against Taken and Scorn enemies, as this will grant 5% bonus ability damage against those enemy factions. Solo Operative increases weapon and ability damage by 15%, but it's only going to be beneficial when we are in an activity solo. There's also Blast Radius, so when we use a grenade launcher or rocket launcher and get rapid final blows, armor charges are going to be created. And with the use of Argent Ordnance, rocket launchers will get a bonus in damage because of those armor charges. There's a lot of solar-oriented mods this season, but there's also a couple of Strand and Stasis mods that will really amplify the performance of this build. On the Strand side of things, we have Unraveling Orbs, Horde Shuttle, and Dragon's Bite, giving us the added benefit of creating Threadlings, of causing enemies to become unraveled, and causing them to become suspended. And on the Stasis side of things, we have Pillar of Ice, Dragon's Bite, and Hail the Storm, giving us the added benefits of creating Stasis Crystals that deal bonus area damage. So far this season, Bungie has stuck with Solar, Strand, and Stasis Energies as the predominant activity modifiers. So based on what activity you're in, your choice in some of these artifact mods and weapons will need to be changed. When Strand Energies are surged, weapons like the Scatter Signal or the Marcado 45 that come with Slice will be a perfect complement. And when Stasis is surged, weapons like the Lingering Dread or the Cold Comfort with Chill Clip will be great additions, or stasis weapons that have headstone or cold steel like the Zephyr. When it comes to our armor and character stats, when we're in PvE, resilience has got to be the number one focus, and it needs to be at 100 if at all possible, and recovery will be next because it's going to increase how quickly our health begins to regenerate. It also reduces the base cooldown of our Rift Energy, which will just make the Vesper of Radius that much more efficient. We've already got terrific uptime of all of our abilities, but since our Flashbang Grenade is going to stun Overload and Unstoppable Champions, and it's going to help us keep enemies disoriented, then Discipline will be the next character stat that you'll want to focus on. And when it comes to our choice in armor mods, our goal is to help enhance the synergy that we have between the Vesper of Radius and our Stormcaller subclass. This is why we're using Harmonic Siphon, Heavy Handed, 
Firepower, and the Reaper mods. With the combination of Spark of Amplitude and these other armor mods, orb generation is going to be insane. And with all those extra orbs, we'll have a constant source of health recovery, since we're also using the better already boots mod. This is also going to be a great reason to use Innervation and Absolution, so that when we collect those orbs, we'll get bonus grenade energy, on top of bonus energy to all of our abilities. The increased orb generation is going to give us a steady supply of armor charges, and we could use those with Utility Kickstart to double down on our class ability regen, but honestly, it's not even needed with this build. And since special and heavy ammo economy has gone to shit, I would suggest to use either special or heavy ammo finder, along with a special finisher mod. This way, when you perform finishers, armor charges will be consumed to provide special ammo. This is really going to come in handy if you're trying to use those special weapons, like the Indebted Kindness, as a primary weapon and to give you added protection when performing those finishers. We're using Proximity Ward, so you'll get an overshield as those finishers are getting performed. And it's also for that reason that I would recommend using finishers that have shorter animations, so that you spend less time performing those finishers and more time kicking ass and taking names. And with that, I think we've rounded out everything about this extraordinary Stormcaller build featuring the Vesper of Radius, a build that's going to give you so much more than just a weaponized rift. And to that point, if you haven't checked out the Vesper of Radius yet, you should certainly do so. And once you have, let us know what your thoughts were down in the comments below. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. If you're a new Light Guardian, just starting your journey, or a battle-hardened veteran just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And if you need to make a copy of today's build, you can also find a link to that in the description. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.